Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my most worn fragrances in August. A few things, a few things. Um, I've been away for a while, a few weeks actually. I had my father-in-law's funeral, I've been sick when I started feeling get better, I got the new booster shot, I, that laid me out, <laughs> laid me out. I was dead to the world for a while, I'm still feeling it kind of in my this area right here is where I'm still feeling it. So uh, I've been gone, but I'm back. And this week I have planned to get as many videos up as possible and next week, Monday through Friday videos to so get excited. Also, my hands. <laughs> I actually decided to go on a little tie dye adventure with some of my clothes. And I did wear gloves, but when I was cleaning up the mess, I decided to take off the gloves like, like, like a silly. And, and thus my hands. So the next few videos you might see uh, my hands. I promise I'm fine. This is just tie-dye. Um, yeah, hi. <laughs> so August fragrances. Oh, one more thing. I have been battling a migraine. So if my eye is, if I look like I'm looking off camera all weird and funky, I'm just battling migraines. It's been fun. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> my, bright, positive, glass, half full personality. But anyway, let's forget about all the stuff I just said and get into the point of you guys really being here, which is August most worn fragrances. Now, August for me was a bittersweet month. I most definitely had uh, some good things. It was my birthday, it was John's birthday, my sister's birthday, but it was also uh, the funeral for my father-in-law. My father-in-law passed away at the very beginning of August. It was a very bittersweet month, but I will say that I did have a lot of different fragrances that I wore and I did lean on a lot of different scents. Now I'm going to talk about one fragrance for a while. So this is going to be a longer chattier video, which is why this video took longer to get up because I actually filmed this video three days in a row and I just talked forever. So the first few fragrances I'm going to talk about are the ones that were the most worn. And then I'm going to talk to you guys about the fragrance I wore for the funeral and why I chose what I did and talk to you guys a little bit about my thoughts on wearing fragrances for important um, occasions. Like if you're a guest at a wedding, or if you're going to a specific event that has a lot of meaning to it, like maybe you're going to a christening, or maybe you're going to, unfortunately, a funeral or a memorial, there are certain scenarios where certain fragrances might be more appropriate or less appropriate. And I'm going to talk to you guys about why I wore what I did. The first one, I just real quickly, since I did do a lot of traveling in August, going up and down Florida, because that's where I had to do, my father-in-law lives, uh, he lived in uh, Pompano Beach and I live in Gainesville, so we had to travel driving, so I have my travel fragrances, which is Eccentric Molecule, Molecule 1, Bulgari Eau de Vert, and my Body Mist of Neroli Portofino. Those are obviously with me at all times. I also wore a lot of, again, please excuse my fingers, uh, Atelier Cologne Clementine California. And I also wore a lot of, because this is in my purse, now this particular bottle looks full because when I wear this, I wear the travel atomizer of this, which is almost empty. And it is Aqua Celestia from Francis Kirjan. I have the little uh, zinc, I think it's called the Globe Trotter uh, atomizer case. And so I put them in there and I've had like three or four of them and I'm on my last Aqua Celestia travel atomizer and I think there's two more wares and then it's completely empty but I love this and so once I am empty with that I've actually considered just chucking this bottle in my bag because I wear it so much. So these were my most worn kind of grab and go scents that I wore when I traveled. And when I travel, my travel fragrances I have to be very mindful of because usually when I travel unless I'm traveling like across country or two or three states away I generally go by car. And when I'm traveling down south to Florida, we have a specific route that we take because we have, since we drive, I drive a Tesla, so I'm not trying to like be like, hey, look, I drive a Tesla, 
but when you charge a Tesla, when you charge an electric car, it's not like a gas car. And I didn't realize this until I got an electric car. You don't just plug it in for like 10 minutes. Oh, no, no, no. It can be an hour and a half sometimes, depending on if you're at a specific charging station and if you're next to cars. So if it's the specific charging station that's faster and there's no cars around, you might be able to charge your car up in 20 minutes. But if you're at one of the slower charging stations and all of the, the spots next to you are full up and some of them are those big chunky Model X's, it can take over an hour to charge your car uh, to like a full tank of gas. So if I'm sitting in that car for an additional hour, I want to make sure that if I'm wearing a sense, I'm not suffocating and hurting the nose of the person next to me, which is John, who hates fragrances. So I have very specific travel fragrances. So generally eccentric molecule, molecule one, Bulgari Eau de Vert, and the body spray of Tom Ford. But I did want to bring a few other things just because I had been wearing those so much because we've been traveling so much. And I found that Clementine, California was obviously very beautiful. And also I, I have this in my purse, so everywhere I go I have it. So I wear a lot of those too. Now, the one fragrance that I purchased that I knew once I got in my collection, I was gonna wear a bunch, and I do one spritz of this, is Dixic and Zach. This is the Nightingale, beautiful fragrance. When I reviewed the scent, and if I have reviews of any of these fragrances, I will link them below. With this fragrance, with the Night Blooming Jasmine note, it can, that note does have aspects of it that a lot of perfumers like to tame. And what I love about this scent is that they are celebrated. It is a challenging fragrance, but it is not an unwearable fragrance. And so if you enjoy a more animalic, masculine jasmine scent, this is just stunning. Well worth checking out. Beautiful house. I was initially going to buy a few other bottles from this house this month, but a lot of stuff's come up, <laughs> good things and bad things. I have a few personal projects I'm working on that required funds, so I just dipped into some of my birthday money funds, so my birthday purchases are being um, spread out between September and October. But I, I really love this fragrance. I love this house. This house needs to be talked about more. Just stunning jasmine. If you like jasmine, if you like complex, challenging fragrances, if you want something different, just try and get your hands on a sample of that. It's worth well, well, checking out. And as soon as I got a bottle of it, I knew I was gonna wear it a bunch. Well, aside from, you know, whatever scent I decide to wear for the day or to review, the, the funeral fragrance. So ever since I had my channel, and I think I started my channel in 2016, I don't remember, it's been a while. Ever since I started reviewing fragrances, I think a lot of people who review scents get asked a question. One of the most common questions is where, what, how, what would you recommend for this scenario? Normally it's like parties or dates or would this smell sexy on a man, would this smell sexy on a woman? And there have been occasions where people have asked me for like what would be a good fragrance to wear to an occasion like a funeral. and. Over the course of my YouTube career, I've had to go to two, three, three funerals, three funerals. Um, my father, a very close family friend who was like a second mother to me growing up, and re more recently, my father-in-law. And when I chose the scent for my father-in-law, the reason why this is also the most worn scent is because I did take this with me to travel, so the week I was down there, I wore this a lot. So if I wear a fragrance more than like five times, that is a lot. So it's like a most worn scent and I do love this scent. When I decide to wear a fragrance for an occasion where the emphasis is definitely not supposed to be put on me and it's supposed to be something that's represented, representative of something important. So like if it's somebody's birthday party, obviously it's a little bit different than if it's somebody's wedding or say somebody's memorial or funeral. You do not want to be disrespectful of the space, of the people, of the situation. And so sometimes there are, you, you have to compromise. You don't have to compromise who you are. You don't have to compromise your identity. You don't have to compromise, you know, ways that you like to represent yourself. And fragrances can definitely be 
a way and a form of self-expression. And if fragrance is an important aspect of your outfit, if it's something that makes you feel complete and you like to wear it, I don't think that, you know, there's anything wrong with wearing a fragrance to these scenarios as long as you're respectful. Unless, say, the person at the memorial is like, please don't wear fragrances. There's people that, you know, have a sensitivity, so we're just asking people not to wear fragrances. Same thing for a wedding. But it depends on the fragrance that you wear. So I wouldn't wear one of my super challenging, more fecal, barnyardy, oud fragrances to either a wedding or a funeral. Not so much because they would be inappropriate because people around me might have very real, like they might not like the sun, it might give them headaches. It's just, it wouldn't be respectful of the space and it might detract for the reason why people are there, which is either to celebrate like a wedding or to mourn and remember a situ uh, the person at a funeral. So first is just being respectful of the space that you are not distracting from the reason why you are there. When it comes down to weddings, you can have a little more vivacity and sassiness, um, attractiveness and confidence in your fragrance. It can be a little bit more fun with your scent because that's a celebration. But at the same time, you don't want to overthrow the celebration with a fragrance that might suffocate and fill a room. And that's a completely different conversation. But when it comes down to funerals, it is completely different. Because that situation, uh, for a lot of people, can be very um, thoughtful, it can be very deep, very heavy, uh, you want to make sure if wearing a fragrance is important to you and you will be wearing a fragrance and you will not compromise by not wearing a fragrance, which is totally fine, you want to make sure that the scent isn't going to overpower or distract from the reason why people are there. So in my opinion, I would stay away from scents that are like clubbing fragrances, <laughs> scents that you would wear to a club or you would wear to a party that have the ability to fill a room and grab the attention when you are in the proximity of like a hundred sweaty people who are also wearing very uh, bold fragrances. So very strong, powerful beast mode scents, I would say probably wouldn't be appropriate in a funeral setting. Now this is just my opinion, so please take it with a you know, grain of salt or a pinch of sugar, whatever you wanna do. Uh, same thing to be with the types of compositions and notes. Uh, that has more to do with the idea of some people can get headaches, can get coughs, they can get watery eyes, and if you are at a funeral, you don't want to worry about getting a headache because somebody's wearing too much fragrance. You want to focus on the reason why you're there, which is uh, being there for the family and friends of the departed, and also showing your respects for the person that passed away. And having somebody wear way too much perfume that's maybe a composition that's a little bit too heavy or a little bit too strong can detract from the situation. So you want to be very mindful of that as well. So when people ask me what fragrances would you recommend for a funeral, well, obviously I'm not going to sit here and do a top 10 fragrances to mourn the loss of somebody you love. That would be, in my opinion, not a good list, kind of disrespectful, but also it completely depends on the situation, where you are, where you live, and the type of service. Some services are more formal, some services are more casual. And it also depends on the people going there. Is it a small gathering? Is it a larger gathering? Is it outside? Is it in the church? Is it in summer? Is it in winter? So I think that just keep in mind the respect of the situation and the space and the reason why you're there and you can wear just about anything. Now for me specifically, I knew that I was not going to wear anything that was super floral if I was going to wear something floral, it was going to be more of an aromatic floral. So I wasn't going to wear anything with rose, definitely nothing with white florals, nothing that could elicit anything that was super sweet or powdery. First, because I know everybody in my husband's family doesn't like those scents. They, they don't like them. It causes headaches. And the last thing I want to do is to detract from their feelings in regards to the situation. And... 
uh, I also knew that if I was going to wear a fragrance, because I wanted to wear a fragrance, because fragrances for me are very grounding, they uplift my mood, they are very important to me, especially in very stressful and anxious inducing times. Uh, not everyone feels that way and that's totally fine, but for me they can be very important. And I knew that if I thought that I smelled nice and appropriate and if I put thought into my fragrance, it was also a bit of a distraction. Uh, I wanted to choose a fragrance that wouldn't cause harm to especially the people closest to me because those are the people that were closest to the situation and were feeling at the deepest, you know like my husband and his sister and his mom and my father-in-law's, you know, wife and his uh, sisters and brother and everything like that. I wanted to be as respectful of being a part of that closeness as possible and not detracting from the situation. So I decided to go with a fragrance that had a really beautiful lavender note in it, but had a gorgeous kind of creamy sandalwood. This scent is a masculine fragrance, but feels a little bit more of the shared unisex. And I also thought if it was more of a shared fragrance and less masculine or feminine, it would be more um, familiar for people and not super challenging. I find that those uh, compositions and styles of perfumery, if you're doing something that's kind of a little bit more lavender and a little bit woody and creamy, that smells a little bit more unisex, those are a little bit more approachable and easy for people to understand and less distracting. So the fragrance that I chose was from Initio Parfums and it is Rehab. And I absolutely love this fragrance. It's really beautiful. This also has a nice projection and sillage where it does have projection and sillage, but it's not heavy and suffocating and thick. So it didn't overpower, but I did feel like I smelled nice, and that is, for me, very important. And it lasted just long enough to where I sprayed it right before we left for the funeral, um, and by the time we got there, it had settled and sat on my skin where it wasn't so heavy, but I could still smell it and enjoy it, and it kind of helped me throughout the day because it was a very stressful day, obviously. And lavender is also very calming, and that was something for me that I needed and I really enjoy this scent. This is a really beautiful fragrance. Again, please excuse my fingers. It, this is just this beautiful white bottle and I just clipped my fingernails. So like, they, I this just looks like something out of a, like a Halloween movie. It's like way off topic, but um, this fragrance was like one of the first ones I thought of to wear and bring because I thought it would be the most approachable, the easiest to wear, the easiest to understand, the less, the less offensive fragrance that was still very beautiful and worked very well. So that was my most worn because not only did I wear it to the funeral for all of those reasons, but I also wore it days before and after when I was in the area still. So those are my most worn fragrances for the month of August. August again was, was rough but there were also things to celebrate too. Um, again, it's my birthday, or it was my birthday in the past. I'm 38, I can't believe I'm 38. I'm not at all um, sad about that. I'm actually one of those people that gets excited about the journey of life getting older. Um, I'm getting healthier, which I'm super grateful for, especially dealing with that the mortality of life is i've come too close to seeing it for me personally and also seeing people that i love deal with it in regards to my father-in-law uh, my father and then also you know the situation with my mom it's been it's been rough and so trying to be um, healthy and respectful to my body and my space and everything has been Oh, I've seen real leaps in August, so that's kind of something that I'm happy about. I thought about talking to you guys about all that. If that's something that you guys would like me to do, I'd be more than happy to sit down and have a real conversation about everything. It would not be fragrance related, so I have decided not to do it. But if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know. But more importantly, those are my most worn fragrances in August. and. 
I'm excited to move forward with my channel and actually have the time and energy and getting over this COVID shot because, oh man, that last booster laid me out. My arm was like a 10 out of 10 pain. I was crying. It was so bad, it was so bad. But it's finally better except for like my armpit in here. It, it hurts still, but it's fine. But I finally got the energy and the focus and the, and the ambition to film again and the spoons, most importantly. And look at these thumbs. Yeah, so you're gonna see these thumbs for like the next week. My hands are gonna look miserable, but uh, you're gonna get content again from you guys. So uh, get excited. But thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye.